guys, it's Linda Winter, and it's almost Halloween. So I want to share with you some of my Halloween projects. If you guys know me, WinterDesigns.com, and you've seen me at the trade shows, and maybe you've seen some of these projects, but I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday, and usually I'm never home. Usually, never. I'm usually not home to be able to decorate and to have fun and to trick or treat and all of that stuff. So I want to show you some of the projects that I have from the templates that I have. And the templates that I have have that no-slip material on it, so that means they're fast and easy, cutting is accurate and consistent, so no need for paper towels. All right, so if you've got little ones or newbies on the way, then let's make them some bibs. So this little guy here, and you notice I have an elastic. I like to use elastic headbands because when you put these on the babies, no buttons, no snaps, no nothing, no Velcro, all those things that lets them pull them off. With the elastic, you put it on their head and you can tie a knot. This is my little monster, and this is mommy's little monster. And you can see these guys here, they were done with an embroidery machine, but you do not have to have an embroidery machine. And isn't it appropriate that Cole, my black cat with the green eyes, just decided to pop in and, and share her presence with us. Sylvester, my other black kitty, black and white, she's down at my feet running around rubbing on me. So these little guys here, they're embroidery designs, but you can do felt, you can do glow in the dark marker, so it doesn't have to be an embroidery machine. I have had um, some project samples that I showed in one of my videos way back when, and I had written directions for this, so you can go search for them, or you can simply watch my video on making bibs. This guy here, this is the baby bib. You're placing the fabric on the fold, and I love using flannel. Flannel, just to me, you know, it's one more a uh, little bit of layer of information that, that will hold up, information that will hold up, make it a little bit thicker to be able to grab whatever it is that babies have. So, little monster, little monster Frankenstein. So, those are done from the baby bib. I wanna show you another project that I love from the baby bib. This is another little monster, but this is a stuffed monster. So, this guy here, again, embroidery design, but it can be whatever it is that you want to do. <laughs> Look with Cole. How cute is that? I cut out wings from some old fabric that I had, but these kinds of things that you found, you can see they're starting to fall apart. So you can take these and use these. Look how cool that would be for this little guy. It's the baby bib template. And again, choose how you wanna do the face. You can even give your little ones crayons and markers, permanent markers, those white markers would be great for this too, the red markers, whatever it is. You know, they're fabric markers that let you do this, but this stuffed bat, it's the same template, that baby bib template. I'm just gonna throw everything down and we'll see what Cole will let me get away with. This is my Owl Taggy toy. This is a stuffy toy, and this was made for my burp pad, but I had so many people, whoops, so many people requesting it. Maybe she doesn't like it. So many people requesting this as a template that I went ahead and had a complete owl made. So this right here will allow you to make this. You're gonna simply take your two fabrics. Let's see if I can grab them. I've got a towel here, and I love, this towel right here. I would take this towel and we're gonna stitch down. This is gonna be the top of the bat and this is gonna be the bottom of the bat. I would simply stitch this on to here, cut this straight, stitch that on, and then place the template on top and then cut that out. And that'll give you this piece and this piece. So you can do that for the front and back. If you wanna do that separately for the back, you can, or you can do one piece of fabric on the back too. Tina pulled together an embellishment kit for the Owl Taggy Toys. I have an Owl Taggy Toy kit. When you buy the burp pad, you could buy the Owl Taggy Toy kit as an extra. And it's four flowers that makes two eyes and there are eight buttons in there that makes four sets of eyes and then there's at least 20 ribbons that are at least 10 inches long and what those um, tags do they're for a flat owl and you put them here all the way around so babies when they're flat they like to play with them they're taggy toys and you put crinkle material in there I did a video years ago you can go watch that video I think it was six years ago and I'm basically telling you to use the burp pad template and then a paper template now you can take this template and get her done. You can also get this Halloween kit. All of this, the fall stuff, it's all Halloween-ish, fall-ish. If you don't like Halloween, then it's great for fall too. But this gives you all kinds
kinds of embellishments too. So this right here would be a really great gift to give somebody that maybe is learning to craft so they can have fun with it. If you're making these for little babies, do not do the flowers, do not do the buttons. You can do felt and stitch that down. I talk about those things in the video too, so you don't have to worry about that. That big um, templates for the burp pad. I have the burp pad over here and I'm trying to think where it went. Somewhere on here, we'll find it on the table as I start going through things, but it makes this. So this big one here, you can fold this down, put a lining in it basically, and add a handle and this is a great trick or treat bag. That's made from the burp pad template, large size. Last year, Lisa and I did Halloween, Fall is in the Air, and I made this and after I made it, I thought Frankenstein is missing his bolts. So I need to go back and add his bolts for you. But let's take a look at this Frankenstein and how adorable is he. This is made from the large burp pad template and this was all freehand. I didn't do the embroidery machine. I did this on the sewing machine and this was simply cut and then you use whatever kind of strap you want. I like the coordinating fabric that's fun inside. But again, imagine the bolts that are sticking out there too. So just one of those cute things. So just like the baby bib um, that I did so you can make these out of the large burp pad and it'll show up somewhere along the way. So let's pop that out of the way. Let's get that out of the way. One of my templates that's been around forever is my box bag template. The box bag, that's this guy. It looks like a house, but it actually goes upside down. Linda McGee, he has done a bunch of projects with this. I've done a ton of projects and you can see how beat up this thing has been. He's been around with me at the trade shows for years in a suitcase full of batting. And that's why it's all white. So I don't recommend recommend felt if this is going to be used year after year after year. But do you notice I wanted to show you the bottom because this is wrong sides together and that's where those points come together. I've got a video that will show you how to make the boxes and then you simply add you want to add the wings. This is an embroidery machine, but again, you can use felt or whatever it is. And then you can also use these kinds of things too. So all of these goodies that you have left over from your projects, look how cute that would be. I mean, that's just like, I mean, so much more glitzy than mine. Isn't that adorable? So imagine that like that. How cool is that? And this would be a great trick or treat bag for those little ones too. And even for the older ones. That's the box bag template. A table runner. I have a, um, I think it's a 10 degree ruler. I can't remember which it is, but these table runners are such fun to make and you make them from all of your scraps. So they whip up really, really fast too. All right. Lisa did the pumpkin template many years ago. And this was one that I stole from her. Sorry, Lisa, she knows I have it. I keep saying I can't find it. And then I find it and then I decide I want to keep it. What is this? This has the no slip material on the back. So this can be a mug rug. It can be a hot plate too. And we're basically, and you'll see Lisa do it on the video. And she and I have shown um, the templates a lot of times. This is the pumpkin template. And this is the pumpkin applique. We have a stuffed pumpkin, but this is the applique. You'll fold your fabric and you don't cut immediately, you're going to place this next one, you're going to place this next one, and you can see how that does that side and it does that side. So you'll see us making several projects with this set of templates. And the pumpkins come in three different sizes. And if you buy the pumpkins from my website, I'm going to throw in during the holiday season three leaves. These don't come with the pumpkin template, but I love leaves to be able to decorate the pumpkins. And instead of having to freehand, the templates are there for you. So that's an extra kind of thing. The other day for Wild Wednesday Live, if you didn't get a chance to see it, it was October 5th, Wild Wednesday Live on the Facebook page, and you can go watch it on YouTube as well. I showed a whole bunch of new stuff stuff for the kitchen. This is my oven mitt. It's a new oven mitt. And how adorable is this? This guy here, quilt as you go, if you want to do that simple strip piecing. This guy here, I made it a little bit longer by instead of folding the binding over, that's where it would end. I wanted it to be a little bit longer, but it's a shorty. I also made a 
big one for guys. This one for all those guys that are out there at the grill, all of that, not Halloween, but it's fall, so Thanksgiving, so you can see how cute that would be. And that is my oven mitt. And the oven mitt shorty is what I'm calling it. That's this little guy right here. And this one is one of my new favorites too. You're gonna to be able to do piecing with this and just all those scraps have a good time with that. So, and actually it's right here too. All right, Lemoyne Star. If you haven't done Lemoyne Star yet, it's basically kind of a fancy, not a diamond, but kind of, and you're just piecing these. And these are just hot plates. These can go underneath whatever it is on your table in your kitchen for decoration, but also put insole bright in there or insole fleece. That's the insole fleece that um, kind of protects your surface. Not totally, you need to have some batting in there as well. But these are a whole lot of fun to whip up from all of your scraps too. This last year when we did our um, fall is in the air. I did a bunch of pin cushions and this was from all the leftover scraps that I had. And there's that towel that I showed. And it's just a really quick, easy project. If you've got sewers that are new to sewing, get some nice pins, good quality ones, because most people kind of don't splurge on themselves and stuff this with pins. Also put inside, I don't know if you can hear, that crunchiness that's there, that crunchiness, it's um, all of the walnut, walnut shells. Can you hear it? So walnut shells and batting, or you can use the scrubbies in the kitchen. We did this last year on Facebook Live. I'm not sure if it's still available for you to go watch, but it's a fun one too. I have adult bibs. Now these are clothing protectors and the adult bibs, that's what this template is. I thought, you know, instead of having all my Halloween fabric for all of this, you take the towels. These towels that you have and you just attach it basically here. And when you attach it, now you've got a towel. You could do Velcro if you wanted to. It's just easy enough to throw this in the washer and dryer. And the thing is, they're not going to be wearing this for day after day after day after day. They're going to wear it for Halloween and maybe, you know, the week of Halloween. But you can add all of those towels that you can get cheaply. And that's done from the adult bib. You can use all of your good Halloween fabrics and make them and go to town with it if you want to. Behind me, hanging, I've got pillowcase dresses. Pillowcase dresses, Nancy Zeman was kind of known for pillowcase dress for Africa. She promoted it a lot. So I really got into making pillowcase dresses for a while. Way before I started making templates, I made the templates out of cardstock and I laminated them. And every time I cut, they change shape just a little bit. So I have four of the pillowcase templates, small, medium, large, extra large. And what that lets you do is make pillowcase dresses. But you can not only make dresses, but you can make little outfits. This is a little costume here. And this little guy here, I I did elastic at the bottom and elastic at the bottom. You can stuff this if you want to. You don't have to, but for the little one that's out trick or treating, this would be a really cute costume to make. And then these little guys here, I don't know if you've seen them before, but I bought, bought these years ago and I thought, how cute is that together? So pillowcase dress, but elastic at the bottom. It's just a fun little thing. You can do this with black and do cat eyes. You can do it white with black eyes for a ghost. Over here, this one on the far opposite side, this is a towel, a towel and a towel. And this, I didn't add, it was already on the towel. So I got more bang for my buck. And those little spiders I thought were so cute. This netting, it's adorable, but if you've got a little girl that's itchy, that's sensitive, she's not gonna like that at all. Some girls can tolerate it. And when I say girls, I mean little girls. I have videos and pictures of a little girl at a trade show, maybe two or three running around in this dress, and it was down to the ground. And then I had another girl that wore it, and it was up to her thigh. Eye, but because the dress is adjustable, you can wear it for years and years and years. So if you're doing Halloween costumes, it's one of those things you can pull out. And even if it's just a pajama that they wear to bed, because they make great pajamas too, they can wear them for years, just like this one. This with Halloween fabric, and you can see, I didn't do any piecing, but it sure looks like I did some effort there. You can add the decorations on there. This has binding. My video will show you how to finish off the sleeves in a variety of ways. And then this one's very 
simple Halloween costume. This right here, it's not even lined, and this was just rough cut here. And then applique, raw edge even, and then a really pretty fabric that had spiders on it. So the pillowcase dresses are a whole lot of fun. I think those are the dresses that I have to show you. This guy here, I don't know if you can see my spiders. I have a crazy quilt template. The crazy quilt comes in five different sizes and they have fussy cut frames. And you can see some of the spiders are perfectly centered, but then some of them are not. This one I love because he's not right in the center and it's kind of like he's sneaking in to that web with that candy corn. So this is a fun project to do as well. And that's done for my crazy quilt. All right, so my friend Beth, Beth and Shirley, love, 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 Beth and Shirley. Beth made this, and I thought, it's not Halloween, but imagine Halloween fabric or black and white spider web fabric, and then you put your condiments in there, and this right here even, this little guy here, this is for um, diffusers. It's got a, a pumpkin um, smell to it, and you put the diffusers in there, so you can have that in your kitchen. But Beth made this out of my microwave bowl cozy, and instead of cutting these darts out and finishing them she left them and she said that Homer her husband just loves to have all of his condiments right there at the table so do this out of Halloween fabric or some fabric that's fall ish microwave bowl cozy Here's a microwave bowl cozy. It's not rounded curves. I decided that I wanted to make microwave bowl templates that are square. The square templates, that just gives you a little bit more fabric to grab. The curved, imagine if it's curved here, it's a little dressier. And if you haven't watched my videos on microwave bowl cozies, I've got a ton of them. There's tons, so you can go watch one that I filmed earlier this year that has a lot of stuff. I now have nine different sizes and I have fussy cut frames for them as well and there are tons of bundles there too okay so my storage pod template the storage pod it's for storage but it's also a great gift so you can stuff this full of all kinds of goodies there's doggy stuff in here because this is bad dog tavern and I thought this was so cute bad dog tavern so it has dog clothes dog goodies things for outside if you're going to have a little picnic in the park take the dogs for a walk and have a picnic in the park then this becomes your picnic basket and you can put your bread and your cheese and all that stuff in here too but this is done for my storage pod template the storage pod template comes in five sizes originally I did three sizes but it became my favorite and I had to do more so you can see right here this is place on fold what that place on fold gives you is this right here is that front part of it and then your seam is in the back these are so fun so quick so easy and they make great gifts and they're great projects to make and sell too now, if you are going to give Halloween gifts, a lot of people give candy, but maybe you want to do um, a gift card. Maybe you want to do, you know, note cards. You want to do whatever it is. These have always been fun projects to do. It's just a snap bag. And inside of here is the metal tape that you get from the measuring tape, from the um, the the measuring tape and you're going to cut two of them if you look at all the directions they'll tell you to cut one and put tape on the edges i'm going to tell you to put two in there because if i do this a bunch of times at some point it's going to stick and it won't close but if you put two in there it will close unless you use the 25 dollar tape measures and i do not want you doing that i don't want you rating your husband's so these you can make in any size you want I have templates that are rectangles that were for my masks that I did during the pandemic, and they're just really versatile for so many projects. So you can make these kinds of things in whatever size. So you could make it even half that size if you wanted to. Imagine folding this in half and having that be the bottom, and it basically would be like that size with this at the top or this at the top. So there's just a ton of different things you can do with that. Your fabric choice makes all the difference. Okay, this is not Halloween, but I want you to think Halloween fabrics. If you're gonna do Halloween fabrics, it's only good for a couple days, really, but you can put in there, again, this is the Wench's Little Helper. I bought this for my sister. <laughs> <laughs> so my sister and I both love Halloween, but she loves Halloween more than anybody I know. Bad Dog Tavern. You can see this would fit in here, this wouldn't fit in here, but it would fit in here. So imagine Halloween fabric or a black and white fabric or a whatever fabric. I added just a little hair ribbon on top of here and then inside of here, believe it or not, 
it doesn't hold just bottles, but you can put other things in there too. A candle. It's one of those luminaries that has the battery. And so you can make these cute little bags for this too. So the bottle bag, that's one of my favorite projects to just make one after another, after another, after another. They're just a whole lot of fun. Shirley and Beth made some samples for me this summer and this spring, really, when I was down in South Florida. And this is one that Shirley made. And this one has a fusible stabilizer. And I've got one somewhere else that doesn't. And it does make a difference on what you want that project to be. This, you'll notice it has a curve. Remember the other one that I showed you, the box bag? It had four sides. This has six sides and these are curved but I also have a straight bag when we go to the website I'm going to try to remember to show you the six-sided bag that has Sylvester sitting in it so it's up straight but this one I like because it's great to hold my tools and all my goodies in there but I think too with the handle on here this would be a really cute trick-or-treating Halloween bag not just for little ones but the day of the dead I think would be a whole lot of fun I have my different tools inside of there so that's a fun one to do as well I showed on Wild Wednesday Live the other night some new templates, towel toppers, and this was one that I showed. Lisa made this one for me with my tab top towel topper. And you can use whatever fabrics and any kind of coordinating tea towel. So you can imagine this guy here, treat, trick or treating with my nomies. You can imagine this one here with the spider. You can imagine more booze, please. So you can have a whole lot of fun with your towels that are so easy to find. And we just filmed a video on this, so be on the lookout for that. And you can have all kinds of fun with not just the fabrics, but with the layout too. So if I wanted it to go this way, Okay, so let's look at this. Look how cute that would be. All right, you're not going to use this whole towel. You'll see on the video how to do it. And I'll show you also your placement here versus your placement here. You know, it's based on what you're going to be hanging this on, but it's also based on your fabric and the look that you want to get. But the towel toppers are a whole lot of fun, and I have several different styles of towel toppers. This one right here, I've got some Halloween-ish pumpkin spice to stick inside of here. And this is kind of fall-ish, but imagine Halloween fabric. This is from my new pot holder template. I'm going to have a bunch more projects coming from this pot holder. I got a bunch of templates new, brand new, and I haven't had a chance to even make all my samples yet. So this will be a fun one to do. Not only this, but I want you to think about a little stuffed animal. One of your um, kids' dolls inside of here. It can be a sleeping bag, or it can be a bed, or it can be a comforter, or a quilt, or whatever it is for them, too. You can also fold this over and put a little tab here and put a handle on here. So it's just, it's going to go on and on and on, the different things that you can do with this project. So that'll be a whole lot of fun, too. All right, I have a few others that I want to show you as well. My gnomes. I have gnome fabric that's Halloween fabric that's so much fun, but I also have gnome kits. The gnome kits, I did two different style of gnome kits. There's a sweet um, Halloween, and then there's kind of a spooky Halloween. And what you get with a gnome kit is a ton of goodies to make gnomes. Here's a little gnome. And you can see there's no embellishment on here. So inside of here, you've got a embellishments galore. So there's some Halloween stuff, there's some Halloween stuff, there's some Halloween stuff. Here's fabrics, all kinds of things. So all of this comes in this bag for Halloween. I just want to show you this. I'm not even going to open it all, but let's take a closer look at this. So you can see all of these Halloween goodies, all of these embellishments on this plain old gnome. You add that spider on his head. You add this little broom right here. You can give him an arm if you want to. Add an arm for that little guy and then add something on his head and look how adorable he would be. So there's just a ton of embellishments. So I have got gnome kits in probably 15 different themes right now. We just went nuts with gnomes. And some of you that are gnome lovers like me, you've bought one of every one that I have. So we keep making them. There's just more and more and more. You'll get fabric, you'll get felt, you'll get the batting, you'll get ribbons and trims and all kinds of stuff. You can buy it with the gnome template 
that's going to make this little guy right here or you can buy it without because once you buy one gnome kit you don't need this again so you can get all of these goodies so that is a really great thing as well i'm looking around me to see i think i've covered everything all right, so I want you to go to my website and you will see I've got a ton of products. I wish I had things categorized by Halloween or Thanksgiving or whatever. I don't. So you can go click on products and templates. And my website is winnerdesigns.com. And when we scroll down, I mentioned that six-sided bag that Sylvester is in. And there it is. And Monkey just hopped up. and Maybe we'll see Monkey in a minute. There's Sylvester and it's similar. It's got six pieces that we're stitching together. And when we look at the bottom of it, when we click click on that and scroll back up to the top again, you can see those six points are coming together, but the sides are straight. The one that I had that was the Day of the Dead, it's curved. And that's a six-sided curve basket. You can see this, it's curvy. So it's similar but different. And they're similar but different than my box bag. The box bag, we're sewing four together, and these two, we're sewing six together with these. So it's just a fun thing to do. And here's Monkey. Monkey had to join in today too. So <laughs> monkey is my little monkey, but you all can find on my website a ton of things. If you have any questions, give me a call 850-449-0259. I'll be happy to help you out. I hope you're inspired by these projects. There's lots of information that I shared with you. If you need to know how to make one of these things, I have directions for a lot. I have videos for a lot, but not everything. And some of them, you make a box and then you add the wings, you add the eyes, and and then you made the bat box. So they're easy enough to translate to that. So let me know how, how I can help. My Facebook page is Winter Designs for Sewing and Quilting, F-O-R for Sewing and Quilting, and my YouTube, Linda Videos. I've got 200 plus videos, so if you haven't subscribed to my videos, be sure to do so. That way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you got some inspiration from all these holiday ideas, especially Halloween. Enjoy creating and have fun.